This conference will now be recorded. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's Clueless State Trading Frank. It's approximately 9.25 p.m. I was supposed to start the session at 9, but, you know, New York time. We're always fashionably with late, so uh, I do apologize. Actually, blame my dogs. I live on the waterfront in the Jersey City, overlooking New York City, and uh, we went for a nice uh, three to four mile walk, and the doggies didn't want to come back. All right, so now they're sitting on the patio. Uh, I'm happy, I'm glad that I'm here. Welcome. Uh, this is our uh, midweek uh, webinar session, strategic webinar session that we do, except uh, the last one that we did instead of Sunday, it was Monday, so I just pushed it out to Thursday. Today is Thursday, so 9.26 p.m. on October 15th, 2020. For all my members who have been with us, they know exactly what is happening. The mid-month volatility is almost over, almost over, okay? I predicted this move of this massive volatility, somewhat of the intraday pullbacks and everything. And please, we are straight shooters here. We don't lie. The facts, not the fiction. Listen to the past webinars. I said it's going to be very turbulent middle of the month, give or take two, one to two, plus minus one to two days. That's exactly what happened. Now we're passing over the hump. And I believe that next week and going into the end of the month is going to be fantastic. Not for every stock, but for the overall market. But you have to be vigilant mean that that's what tactical trade is all about okay we never we never sit back and say oh we made so much money on this and that and just feel comfortable you can never feel comfortable when you're a trader because none of us as i put out on one of my tweets out there are at peak performance peak performance means you're doing 90 percent of all the right things none of us are at that I'm probably at like 60, maybe 65, 70% at certain times. And many of you are not even close. I'm not talking about percentage returns on options. I'm talking about your peak performance mentally and as a trader. Okay, so, so before I get into the charts and stuff, and please look at this, this is beautiful. This is what I drew before the fact, at say Trading, oh, I have to say this for legal purposes, according to my lawyer. Full disclosure, these sessions are purely for financial education, not for solicitation or advice. Obviously, they're all suggestions. You decide what you need to do. So anyway, keep on looking at this chart. And uh, let me just say one thing, uh, a couple of things. When you woke up this morning and you had long positions and call options or certain stocks that you know want to trade, did it feel like shit? Yes. I like that, Adrian. Paul, did it feel like crap? With, uh, yes, few, it did. Few... Yes, right? Yeah. Exactly. So, let me tell you what I went through. So I, you know, I, 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 I like track the charts. I wake up at like four in the morning, just like my brain wakes up, you know, the doggies are all over me and I'm just like checking my iPhone. Thank God for iPhones. And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to be a rough day. And I'm like, okay, not happy. Mostly long positions, all well, pretty much all long positions. And, um, And then what? And then this happened. And then this happened. And this is the reason why everybody out there and all your friends, and you got to tell all your friends that Clueless State Trading really rules. Because this chart that was drawn, not after what happened today, well before, guess what happened? And I mentioned this on the Twitter feed too, that if we hold that 3450 level, this 
to be changed to color. The channel held. The market is 99% algorithmic, high HFT, high frequency trading dominated. It is not you and me who controls the market. Like I said on my Twitter broadcast, and please, every single new member and older member, please listen to those. I mean, of course, follow my Twitter um, real-time feed like a hawk. And of course, use your own judgment what you want to do. Because it's all for you a lot smarter than me. Trust me. Okay. But listen to my Twitter broadcast that I said. Okay. So guess what happened? It hit the lower end of the channel and now bang. That it is still what we call in technical analysis lingo, a bull flag. That is a bull flag. So technically, nothing changed. Technically, nothing changed. Regardless of the intense volatility, markets done 342 points. And I said, hey, if this holds, it's going to go higher. It doesn't matter what I say. What I feel and what I want to suggest, I put that down on my real-time Twitter feed. So no one can say, oh, Frank's a BS guy. You know, he's a bullshitter. You know, he just says something. No. It's there. That is the true. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, proof or evidence or credibility of a great trading service. It is. And I told you what the downside could be and this and that. A couple of days ago on my last webinar. Because this neckline, this neckline is critical. And guess what? We broke, we broke that neckline. We came down to that pattern symmetry, what we call the dome. Remember, you don't hear this from other trading servers. I don't, I shouldn't give a crap about that trading service. I'm just telling you this. This is called the dome, the dome formation. Okay, we had the big neckline right here, this big green line that explained thoroughly in detail on my last webinar. And guess what? Boom. And that bull flag, and this bull flag in red is still totally intact. Adrian, Pester, Paul, do you guys understand what I'm talking about? Yes, I do. Yes. Exactly. Remember, um, being a technical trader is uh, not something that comes naturally because naturally a uh, human, uh, please, somebody please mute the mic. Okay, I'm hearing pings back. Uh, naturally, from a human standpoint, human traders are emotional. There's nothing wrong with that, I'm emotional. I get very emotional on my webinars. I get emotional when I don't get emotional with the markets. I feel like crap. I felt like crap waking up this morning. I was down thousands and thousands of dollars. And I went positive today, green, because of some major stocks that the small cap stocks that went berserk. And you guys know exactly which ones they are. Can somebody mention one of them? Mention Square, of, Square Games. Uh, Square was very nice. Which one was the biggest turnaround winner? GME. You, you see, exactly. GameStop. You could have bought shiploads of calls at cheap prices, and boom, you'd be up thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars. Thank you so much for participating. Exactly. It didn't matter what the market was doing. And it wasn't just that. SPSE, the turnaround, I mean, the, the late entry and massive profits on Zoom. Square, of course, which was deep in the red. 
That's what a tactical trader is all about. But you cannot become a tactical trader in one day. It might take you two months. It might take you two years. Hopefully not two years. But we'll help you to become a tactical trader as quickly as possible. But it requires hardcore discipline, mental robotic, like almost like being immu uh, like immune, like President Trump says he's immune to the virus, right? Maybe he is, maybe he's not, I'm not sure. But I want him to be immune to the virus. He's got so much energy, I love it. So the fact is that you need to be immune to the volatility in the market. Okay, so that was beautiful. So now, can somebody tell me why this chart is so bullish? Just look at the externals. This is external, this is internal. Forget the internals. What is the external part which is so bullish? Adrian. Um, well, I, I was looking at the gap to be filled. So that so gap was filled. First of all, there's no gap. So you're dead wrong. What gap are you looking at? Is there any I'll gap here? Well, okay, so, so no, no, stop it. I like you. <laughs> I'm going to be a very tough coach. There is no gap. So that's completely bullshit. What is the most important part of looking at this chart? Because I need you to learn. That's why I make the big money. And then a lot of people just sit around like, you know, stroking their asses. All right. What is the most important thing when you look at this chart? Adrian. Um, well, we, we have the stochastic in the bullish zone. Oh, um, Jesus Christ. Like this Jesus. pointing up. No, shut. Fuck the internals. I'm talking about the external. What is so bullish about this chart? I'm already pointing out to you. You're a mechanical engineer. You are one of the smartest people that makes America great, okay? Well, um, we are... Keep it, keep it simple. What is so bullish about this chart? We're hitting the upper target of the channel. Oh, Jesus Christ. Approaching at least. Dead wrong. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, Pester will tell me. Hold on. Okay, it's fine. You tried. If you were sitting on a high level, uh, uh, you know, GMAT exam or SAT, trying to get into one of the uh, highest end schools in America, you'd fail because you never answered the question right. Even though you are answering the question right in a convoluted way. You understand what I'm saying? Here's a simple um, thing. This is an, and I, you do follow my Twitter feed, right? Yes, I do. Liar. Liar. If you followed my Twitter feed, you know exactly what I said about this particular chart twice today. I'm not picking on you. I'm trying to teach you like a tough coach. This is an uptrend channel. And we yes. went exactly. And we stayed within the uptrend channel in a big way. And I mentioned that too. So please, I know you look, but there's a difference between looking at my Twitter feed and understanding what I'm saying in simple English. Do you understand what I'm saying, Adrian? Yeah. yeah because you know what I'm saying to you? It's not an insult. I like you as a friend. The fine point is other people are going to listen to it and say, yes, there's a difference between looking and understanding. This is an uptrend channel. The two fat green lines that I kept on pointing at. And guess what the market is doing? It held the uptrend channels, like I said, yesterday, not today. And it happened. And I was like, yes. And now it's going to go up there. The market is going to go back to 3,600. You did listen to a couple of my ex uh, older webinars, right? From the last week or so? Um, a few. I'm sorry, what? A few. I'm sorry, what? I listened to a few webinars. I don't care about few. Listen to the last two. The market is going to go to S&P 3600. One way or the other, it's going to get there. And in between, it's going to do these kind of pullbacks. That's called standard procedure. I also said that at the middle of the month, 
which is right now, which we're crossing over right now, the shark swamp, you know? Try to uh, dive into a small lake crossing over the other side with sharks ready to eat you. That is the middle of the month, which is now. Monthly option expiration is tomorrow. What I said about monthly option expiration is directly, or did you listen to my Twitter broadcast? Did you? Yes, I did, mm, but I don't maybe recall too didn't. much. I don't recall too much. In in other words, start focusing. If you don't focus on my service, first of all, you're going to be left poor, just the way you have been for losing a lot of money in the market. But if you listen to my broadcast, mix everything in, you're going to be a little bit more richer than you are right now. That's almost a guarantee. But you have to focus hard. Okay, none of that like, oh, maybe I did, maybe I didn't. All right, we are crossing over on Monday. What date is Monday? October. What date is Monday, ladies and gentlemen? What date is Monday? 19. Thank you. We are over the hump. We're going to have a phenomenal week next week. Up and down, of course, but zigzagging higher up towards 3,600 S&P 500 while the price watching, volume watching lemmings who don't listen, I mean, who don't understand the dynamics of what's going on will be just like sitting there with their pants down going, oh my God, you know, lost everything. The, you know, everybody left me. The dogs left me. My boyfriend left me. Exactly. All right. We're going to have the a very strong next week, not every day, overall into October 30th, which is Friday, end of the month. And if I'm wrong, well, I'm not going to be wrong because I've been right so many times on these type of calls. And Paul knows that. So be prepared. So whatever you do, if you're in my service, look, I'm not a trading guy, but I know a lot about Wall Street. We had a great guy join today from Sock Twitch. You know him, Paul. Crystal? Oh, yeah. 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 And we had a nice chat. And uh, this is actually Crystal's company. Wow. He makes amazing stuff. I can't show that. Um, so, um, and he said, man, you saw that right a lot of times, you know? I'm like, it's the experience from Wall Street as a non-trader and then as a trader on my own, trading on my own money and then the service. Well, that's 2011. And then the service in 2014. I said, he says, what's the difference between um, your service and the other? I said, here's the difference. There's a lot of great, great traders out there. But they never worked on Wall Street. They never worked on Boston, in Boston, in the money management companies. They're always putting out their technical charts and stuff. Technicals mean maybe 60% of the game. The other 20% is your, is your experience from working in the real world of money management. And the other 20%, 10 to 20%, is your gut feeling, which comes from your mental calibration is how you look at the market and how what your emotions are. And that's what I keep on trying to make people understand. There are guys out there putting out technical charts. I don't even understand. Paul, sometimes you put out, you know, uh, uh, I, um, not you, but, uh, uh, but uh, you know, you mentioned some of these guys that I actually started following because of you. They put out such complicated shit. I'm like, man. Dude, I'm clueless, eh? I'm clueless. But I know the guts of the market. And those guys know the guts of technical stuff like I don't even, can't even read. You know what I'm talking about, Adrian? Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, I know it's true. Because you can't be that technical to the point where you lose focus and like you said, and I say all, uh, all the time, analysis paralysis. It's not analysis, 
anal lysis, okay? Exactly. I like that actually. It's true. Look at these charts. They're fantastic. Does this mean I'm a crazy bull? No. It means the markets are going higher. And I mentioned this. Uh, this is this this move here was the Trump tweet saying, "I do not want to talk to the Democrats about any stimulus bill." And what did I post that same morning uh, afternoon? I said, "I hate this shit." This, this that kind of tweet, but he's going to flip the next day. And guess what he did? My boy Donald from New York, who's a big mouth. Believe me, I know him very well. I know his CFO. I still have his number on my old BlackBerry, which Paul will laugh about. Okay, because my one of my firms raised almost uh, twenty million dollars for his bankrupt casinos in in Jersey City, uh, in uh, not Jersey City, Atlantic City, which was a disaster. My clients actually sued me on that. They lost. Um, I said, what am I supposed to do? You know, just point the finger at Trump. So my point is, this was the tweet. And I said, he's going to flip. And guess what? The next day he flipped. And we bought. On that day, it went down. Yes or no, Paul? Yeah, Frank. And uh, going back to your early October predictions, uh, they were just dead on looking back like you you gave us the date count at the beginning for, for October 9th, and you the, told us about the volatility of good month. Thank you for reminding me. You listen, everyone who's going to be listening to the webinar, and Adrian and Paul, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Pester, who does it in my Pester, get a mic, man, all right? He's one of my best friends from years ago when I started the service. Jay Pester, Jeremy Pester. And I'm so happy that he got back to us. And uh, that's like the prodigal son returning home okay <laughs> so uh so happy I'm so uh sad that he doesn't have a uh, um a mic but next time he will and you know he loved the chat room the chat room used to be heavy with people and so well if it gets heavy again like it's fine but most people got more like focused and they just dm me directly on twitter so anyway so um yes the day count i said we would go up till the 12th and that's exactly what happened. I mean, it's freaking incredible. Now, as humans, we can always control our trades because even though the markets came down, some stocks went the other way. Small caps went the other way. So it was still a win-win situation, even though net-net, the markets came down hard because the Dow Jones was down 750 points since Monday. Thank you, Paul, for reminding people of that. And that day count is big. So I'm giving you another day count that between now, tomorrow, first half will be good. And then it's probably going to come down a little bit. So, um, but I believe next week we are going to do this. And every one of these things that I've shown has happened. Now, that's where the trade manager comes in, and I'm not your limousine driver i am just somebody suggesting things right so you have to learn how to manage these trades like i have multiple positions so obviously some things are going to go up some things might flatten down a little bit so you know if you're just playing the spy you would be a trading god right now based on my charts so this is what happened and this might happen again a little bit of a pullback 50, 100 points. One way or the other, we're going back to 35, 20, and then we're going to hit some major resistance. That simple pattern recognition. Get used to the world of the matrix of how the robots control the market. And at some point, we're going to get up here. And these are not that far away. In the meantime, the internals look beautiful. Look, this is a daily, uh, this is an hourly chart. Beautiful. Yes. I'm not making this complicated. I'm making this very simple, ladies and gentlemen. That inverse head and shoulder is very intact. It's a mild pullback tomorrow, which I don't think is going to happen. 
if you if uh, uh, Adrian, you do look at my Twitter feed, right? Uh, yes, I am following it. Okay. And if I ask you a question, you can cheat. You can quickly go over and check what a question I'm asking you. What was the breaking news tonight, which was very positive for the market? Um, breaking news tonight, which was positive. Very positive the for the markets, yes, yes. That's why I'm saying you don't really follow my Twitter feed that much, all right? So don't give me that bullshit, all right? So uh, the bottom line is the breaking news was that Mnuchin, our Treasury Secretary, one of the smartest guys in America, is uh, starting to compromise with, uh, with uh, Pelosi. Now, what was the other last post that I put out there? And please, I don't really care whether you lose or make money. I just care that I'm teaching you right and all my other members. What was the last post that I put there, which was so, so critical, and I was so dead right on it? Uh, well, the, the, the only thing that comes to my mind is that VIX broke out of the box downward. <laughs> it could. So actually, you saw it. That's good. That's good. That was big. And the fact is that what did I say about the fix hours ago that this was what, what was going to happen or what the bulls need to happen, correct? Correct. Exactly. And when you're correct in this business, you're big time correct. The market turned around 340 points. Any trader could have bought some spike calls based on my charts and made almost 80% on their money today. Exactly. It's time to grow up. Because I was right. And more importantly, forget about me being right. I showed where the markets would bounce from. You could have bought a few spy calls at a buck, buck and a half. You don't have to wait for me to always say it. You need you to be independent traders. That applies to every new trader who comes into, member who comes into my service. Could have bought a buck fifty. You could have sold it at four for two hundred percent plus. Am I right or wrong? Hundred percent. The the open was the best thing to buy. I'm asking Adrian. Am I right or wrong? Um. Yes. That's that's right. Exactly. There's no um involved. Um means doubt. Okay. I am a trading coach. Um means you're doubting yourself. Um means you're sitting there with your hands in your pocket and not doing much. If you want to be a baller to make, depending on your capital, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars a day on certain days, then you have to get the um out of your vocabulary. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Exactly. You go to a Tony Robbins show, he tells you never to say um. I don't even give a shit about Tony Robbins. He charges people 15000 to sit on a uh, on one of his um, big webinars or seminars that he does to sit there and, and jump and shout like a monkey. And people come out saying, oh my God, my life changed. Well, on you, well, you want your trading life changed? Stop saying um for $70 or $90 a month. All right? Exactly. All right, let's move on. Adrian, you're a good man. All right. Um, so let me finish. Let me finish. Okay. So okay. all this on the daily chart is completely fine. Futures are up nine. Now, that doesn't mean that we can dip back a little bit. So I'm actually showing you what might happen. This is called the inverse head and shoulder. Inverse head and shoulder. That little dip could be 100 points. Don't freak out. When I'm posting my chart, look at it. That's a left shoulder. That's a right shoulder. That's a head. Patterns are very, very important. Internals are all very, very strong. The MACD and the histograms and, and the parameters are all saying we will go high. Uh, we can't go any more higher, but we will move sideways. That's all we need to do. Now. One second, Paul. Um, showed you this. Ah, 
this was beautiful. This was like, seriously, I mean, uh, what I did today, and I'm not like some guys that, oh, I'm right all the time. I'm right a lot of the time, okay? But this, I, I looked at my own thing. I'm like, wow. Now, what was so powerful about this chart? And Paul, stay away because I know Paul like always looks at my Twitter feed and <laughs> stuff and knows. Uh, seriously, Adrian, what was so powerful about this? Because I put it on my Twitter feed. What was so powerful about this daily chart? This is the daily chart of the market. Not like what's happening 15 minutes, 30 minutes, all that bullshit. On the daily chart, which gives much more strength to where the markets are going. What was so powerful? You said you follow my Twitter feed, right? Uh, yeah, but I, I guess I have to follow it more uh, religiously. Okay. Do me a favor. You're a good man, but don't bullshit me, all right? You don't follow my Twitter feed that much, all right? Yes, not religiously. I am not your prophet. I'm not Rasputin, okay? You know Rasputin, the, 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 the Russian guy? from the 18 or 1900s who used to sleep with all the women, you know, Ra Ra Rasputin, okay? Don't call religious, I'm not religious. I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not someone I'm saying. Don't treat me like religious thing, don't. And this applies to every new member who's listening. Don't just bullshit and say, I follow the Twitter. You see, I don't care if you follow the Twitter feed, but if you do, you're gonna make more money. That's all I'm saying. This was one of the most bullish charts that I showed. And I was right on that. And I explained it from point one in the morning when I woke up and said, oh, shit. And the end of the day, I was like, oh, yeah. So please, it's not for me. It's for you guys. And remember what I told you, Adrian, when we spoke on the phone. I'm a straight shooter. Take the knowledge that I'm giving you, use it with your smartness. You're much more smarter than me. Trust me, you are. I'm much more smarter than you in the market. You're much more smarter than me on maybe in the real world. But please, don't BS yourself. Don't bullshit yourself. And I put this up on the Twitter feed even tonight, right here. Hold on, let me just pull it up from my other screen. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, here we go. One second. How can I get this uh, enlarged? Give me one second. So this was the chart in the morning, all down, 342 points down, right there, okay? And things buckling, MACD's, uh, uh, stochastics buckling, not good news. Trust me, if this kept on buckling down and this broke this uptrend channel, that I talked about in the webinars, because you told me, Adrian, you listen to the webinars, right? So focus a little bit more to sort of make you richer and everybody else. You would be in a house of pain coming down to test the uh, red line, the 50 day moving average. Not good. Well, guess what happened? This was the thing that kept on telling me it was going to be a OK. And it was. Because end of the day, look, long tail hammer reversal, candle, uptrend channels intact. So it's not just Adrian, it's a lot of you out there. You guys are completely unfocused about technicals. I know because you're humans. You're looking at your PL. You you know, I swear at the screen so many times this morning while looking at my chart and putting out and servicing all you guys to keep you guys on track. It wasn't even funny. Thank God I have a beautiful balcony overlooking the water and all that stuff. 
So please, the only thing I want from all you new members and all my members is stop. Excuse my French. Somebody will say, oh, he's so rude. So what? So is Trump. Stop bullshitting yourself. Start focusing on the chart. Start learning technicals. If you don't understand it, DM me on Twitter. Sign up for the advanced coaching sessions. I just had a major coaching session with one of my smartest new members, Leah from Austria, this nice lady. She understood what I was teaching and she's not even a technical person. This is not a game of a one shot. Oh, I made some money on GameStop. Oh, I made some money on DraftKings. Oh, I made some money on Apple. No, no, no. It's a game of consistency. This is my living. I have no other paychecks coming from anywhere. You guys might have paycheck coming from your jobs. I have to write my own paychecks. That's why I'm so passionate and so hardworking. Okay, so what's the next chart? Hello, what did this happen for? This always happens, it goes away. I can enlarge it. Okay, let me enlarge it. End of the day, there was a hammer reversal. I even wrote it down. And that was worth 330 points on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And what a beautiful formation, an uptrend channel that is still intact. And the stoves here are starting to flatten. I can assure you, I think that's my opinion, that we are going to turn around like this over the next couple of days because the stimulus bill is almost done. It's gonna turn around like this. We're gonna stay above the 80 level, which I explained very clearly on my last webinar. And we do that, and we're gonna have one of these. You know what one of these says? Staying over the stochastic, uh, uh, which is the second derivative, like, I, uh, like I've told you guys before, of the uh, relative strength index, and you stay above the 80, this is what happens. So while you guys sit there with your hands in your pockets, like grabbing a diaper or whatever you're doing, scared, there's a high probability this can happen. Exactly. And I'm not like a, a crazy bull or, or like, oh my God, every tech stock going to go to the moon and all that crap. I'm just telling you what the markets are going to do. Hey, Frank, may I jump in? Yes, absolutely, sir. Please go ahead, yeah. Paul, uh, my I friend. I was just going to ask you, because um, I, I agree with you, the strong finish to October, very likely. Um, can you show us what your expectation is maybe for the, the next two weekly candles and maybe a monthly candle, what it looks like? Sure. So um, basically, uh, no problem. So I'm, I'm going to stick to this chart. It's, it's, it's one of these screens that gets stuck, so I can get this thing out. Okay, let me just clean this out, erase all drawings. So, this move that happened today was so bullish, was so bullish to me from a technical guy. That is one of the longest tail hammers that I have seen. Look at that. It's called a dragonfly. A dragonfly candle. Look at that. Look at the size of this hammer. When was the last time? It's called pattern recognition. Okay? Pattern recognition. It's like a sniper looking at something like from 10 miles, I mean, to five miles away to take the bad guys out in Syria or in Iraq. Okay? Or in Panama. That's serious. When was the last time I saw because I'm very simple that way from a technical standpoint. When was the last time I saw a massive reversal like that? Like that. So I'm looking back since the bottom, which we called on September 24th. And I'm looking for a tail that long. I can't find one. To me, that's hugely bullish. Now, remember, technical analysis is not like 100% foolproof but it does give you signals. Like they say, technicals precede fundamentals. It gives you some indication. So I think 
first of all, we're going to, of course, hit a roadblock on the on the, on the uh, uh, downtrend line, which is approximately give or take at around 3513, 3520 on the S&P 500. But look at the Bollinger's. They're still shooting up. We went down two days in a row. Third day, as I forecast it, we turned around. Now, things would be quite a bit different. Adrian, are you listening? Yes, I'm here. Yep. I know you're here. Are you listening? Yes, I am. You know the reason I'm calling on you? Because I kind of like you. All right? Because sometimes, you know, seriously, because I don't give a crap, but I think you're smart. You just don't know how smart you are. Exactly. So if this had happened and we were testing the 50-day moving average, trust me, I wouldn't be that happy tonight. I wouldn't be that excited tonight because hitting the 50-day moving average again, which means we would come down a little bit more. But we didn't. We hit my exact channel that I drew. I drew uptrend channel and did a dragonfly reversal. That is beautiful. High probability. Remember, we trade probabilities. We don't trade certainties. because There are no guarantees. We trade probabilities. There's a high probability that we are going to hit this downtrend line, which is a sweet amount of money for traders. And we're going to see the reaction of the market at that line. Because that was the line where the, where the uh, supply uh, supply zone, where the algos came in to sell. My feeling is that we're going to hit here. We're going to we might pull back a little bit here. And then we go back and hit there. So that's the answer to your question, Paul. Well, we, Frank, are was, one, we are well, one way uh, or the other going to 3,600. So go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. And uh, I think that 3,600, I think that's like a long-term resistance. If you look at like a monthly chart, I think it's it's hit it several times. I, I think a stimulus bill could get us through there. Listen, we could go well above 3,600 for a simple reason. If things go right, and it does nothing to do with political stuff or anything, but let's say, for example, the stimulus, which are passing. I know they're passing. All right. There's an old saying on, on Washington and in, 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 in the worlds of... Um, politics, American politics. It's called making the sausage. You know what that means? Anyone know what that means? Making the sausage? No? Yes? No. Okay, Google Google it. Learn it. You guys are Americans, learn it. Learn about the real America. All right? Making the sausage is the going back and forth, massaging this bill that bill whatever it's like making a sausage is that if you guys ever made a real sausage on your own okay maybe none of you have i haven't either okay i've made like nice burgers and stuff like mushed it with my hands with all the spices and everything but yes it's called making the sausage all right something like that google it that's what they're doing in D.C. That's what the, every administration has done. Democrats, Republican, everybody. That's what they're doing. So my point is that what Paul just mentioned, that why can't we get to the upper end of the channel, which is the 3,600, and then the real upper end of the channel, which is 30, I mean, the 3,680, uh, and let's get really bullish. Why not 3,800? Well, that's not something that's going to be happening. That's a Fibonacci level, right? Yeah. That's another Fibonacci level. Okay. Oh, by the way, I saw this guy. He put it. He said we're going to, uh, we're going to 4,000 by the end of the year. You know what? The markets are nuts. I know. I just adapt to what's happening. I predict it can happen. If you look at this channel that I drew, this one, this one. Okay, projecting out from all the way from July. July, that's like when you guys were all like, you know, 10 years younger. I'm just kidding. Um, so 4,100, all we're doing right now, and I want every one of you to listen carefully. We are just browsing around. We're just cruising around the first lower band. The second lower band is this 
One second. Let me just draw it for you. Bear with me one second. And I've been very good at this stuff for many years. And I need to really like, you know, focus on my own stuff. So the next band, ladies and gentlemen, this is your first channel. This is your second channel that projects out to well above 3,000, 3,800. This is the third channel, kind of squeezed in, fourth channel. Now all these things don't happen in one day. That's why you need some patience and discipline. And that's why as tactical traders, I take short-term profits and then I look at some of these other stocks that are more longer term, like the game stocks, which I think are going to 20. Up huge today. 200% almost. On a day that the markets were down at one point, 300 points. And I know most of you just sat there, did nothing. That's your problem, not mine. Neo went through the nuts. So anyway, this is a broader picture of the market. I want to keep on like focusing on that. This is great. This is looking good. It's cr crossing over. These are your channels. So let's look at a, a couple of quick charts before I sign off. Because I do need some of my beauty sleep. And my dogs need my late night walk. God. Any of you have dogs? No. Nope. Uh, Adrian, you have a dog? Not yet, at least. If you get a dog, you're going to be a better human being, all right? How about that? And don't buy a dog. Rescue one. Go to petfinder.com. Put in the breed that you like. We have mostly small and medium-sized dogs. We have four. And they're so cute, it's not even funny. All right? And you'll see me when you go to my Instagram. By the way, did you follow me on my Instagram yet? I have to set up an account there. That's the reason what I'm saying. You're not focused. You don't focus on my Twitter feed. Get the, you know why you're going to be excited about the Instagram? Because you're going to see actual options charts that I put at the end of the night. And I told you this on the phone call just to highlight some of the trades. Why don't you go look at them at the end of the night, get excited to make some real a few money, like we say in New York, all right? Instead of making small pennies, all right? Because well, how does a trader become a great trader when they make big freaking trades once or twice and then like yes have you really made a few money adrian yet not yet exactly and you're on the way to do it but in order to do it stop making excuses stop saying you look at my twitter feed which you don't go on instagram look at those charts get excited without getting like you know somebody uh, offending anybody. It's like when you are young and you look at a cute picture of a girl, like, you know, on the internet, they go like, like, wow, so hot. Those charts are so hot. And they're real charts. How about taking $1,000 and turning into 4,000 in one day? Well, that's exactly what happened in two days with GameStop. How about taking 10,000 and making 40,000? Exactly. So stop hiding under the bed and saying not yet, all right? Exactly, that's the way it's done. So, um, what was I gonna show you? So, let's talk about the stock. The stock exactly hit the 15, 13 level. I said people sell it. These options, I already put it out. You do follow my Twitter feed. I'm not gonna pick on you anymore, Adrian, because you know I've already given you a hard time. But this hard time will make you rich in my opinion, all right? Because, <clears throat> because you're being lazy. Um, so the point is the option chart showed 60 cents, <clears throat> which went to almost two and a half dollars, two dollars and 10 cents. That's 300 plus percent overnight. So let's look at a daily chart. Wow, this stock is up 390% year to date, the stock, and nobody talks about it. Have you heard anybody talk about it? Like they talk about Netflix and Nvidia and Apple and stuff on the media? 
Have you heard people talk about GameStop other than Kramer saying, I don't like it. Well, go freaking shave your little beard off. You know, he looks like a goat. NVIDIA, uh, GameStop is 17 to 20% shorted. You know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means it's got a long way to go that I've been telling you guys. It will go to 16. P big people are in it. The guy who made $3 billion shorting the housing market because he was a smart American. Make America smart again. America was always great. But you have to make America smart again. Michael Burry, the big short, made $3 billion, is in GameStop. The other guy who founded Chewy.com, and we have seven pets, four dogs and three cats. It's a very expensive habit, all rescued, by the way. The Chewy.com founder is a big stakeholder. Other hedge funds are taking positions. What the hell are you guys doing? Sit in there? Exactly. That's what you're doing. 16. Best case scenario, 20. Best case scenario on a buyout, almost 30. I don't think they're going to get bought out till they restructure. Because I work 14 years on Wall Street. A company doesn't get bought out till they fix their problems. Well, guess what? The big guys are in fixing their problems. What a beautiful chart. And you're sitting there wondering where Apple's going to go. Good luck. Goose. Canada Goose. Another great chart. Another great winner for us. This stock, in my opinion, will get bought out. Canada Goose. While you're sitting there wondering what Tesla's going to do. Exactly. Am I being sarcastic? Absolutely. I'm going to help you bozos out there. Stop looking at the big stocks all the time. The AMDs, NVIDIAs, and this and that. Everybody's in it. We all know NVIDIA is a great company. If you know everybody's, if somebody's already great, then how do you nurture somebody who is not that great and make them great? It's like teaching a small kid. Going to a small kid who is an A-plus student and saying, you're great, great. So what's his potential? He's great. How about taking a small kid who is a C, uh, C plus student and saying, I'm going to teach you how to be really smart, third grader or fourth grader, and make you into an A plus student? Well, that's the kind of stocks I'm showing you. Stock is good for 44. And if they get bought out, you're looking, um, you're looking at roughly 60. Are you guys with me, um, Adrian? Are you waking up a little bit? I'm fully awake. Thank you very much. Keep listening, brother. All right? This ain't your stupid other trading services that you follow. So uh, next one is uh, that I like, uh, Blink. Look at this chart. Let's look at the daily. Yes, it's volatile. The stock was up a gazillion points yesterday, gave back a little bit. Still looking for 11. We made a bunch of money yesterday because it went up like a monster because every uh, EV electric vehicle company like, and Tesla, everybody knows Tesla, okay? So what? All right. How about Neo that we made uh, killer loads of money on? And even the other one, I can't even say the uh, the, the the symbol, the other Chinese uh, company. And Blink Supercharging is all in the business of all in the business of supercharging. That's it. How about uh, boo, 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 throw me another one that you know we've been doing Do really look well at on space. Space. Yes, there you go. There you go. That's turning around big time. I love this chart. Look at this. It's all about candles. Yes, we had a down day. Yes, a bullish candle. And this is looking great. Forget about getting up there. 
this was the run up, like you know, when 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 every single trader was in it. Let's focus on this part. This part. One second. That's Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson's company, right, Paul? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sir That's Richard another... Branson, you're supposed to say. Sir Richard Branson, I do apologize. Sir Branson, you know, we should be hanging out at his resort out in the islands. Doesn't he own Necker's Island out there in the Caribbean? I don't know. <laughs> owns yeah, it's, it's called Necker's Island. It's sick, you know, <laughs> Google it. It's like nuts. Uh, and he's a good guy. The smart guy, very well-spoken Englishman. Hello, I'm Sir Richard Branson. I'd like you to make money on SPSC, aka Virgin Galactic. Lovely, buy it. Yes, buy it, because even a one-dollar move will give you forty percent of your money. That's the beauty about it. We bought it. Uh, what happens here? We bought it. I made money, and then I fell. Because the stock was like going down. Okay, if I do I get scared? No, I looked at the chart. And uh, now this is what's going on. One second. This is a cup. This is a handle. And this is where the stock is going. 24 to 28. As long as you have patience, discipline, cost average, and you have time on your hands. Not one week out. Buy it a couple of weeks out, by end of October, end of November. This is a cup. This is a handle. And this is where it's going. Meet me at 24. Meet me at 28. Cha-ching. And even now it's cha-ching if you bought the lows. Because this is a definitive neckline support right there. Right there. That's how we us traders look at. That's a neckline. See the red line here? That's a neckline. See, that was the inverse head and shoulder. Watch. That was your neckline. Always remember, technical traders, and I'm a fundamental trader too because I understand the background of the story, um, look at things differently. And you, Mr. Adrian, as a mechanical engineer, should look at the market like a matrix, like linear and non-linear lines. You cannot be like the other traders. You cannot be, Adrian. You're too smart to be like another stupid trader. That's serious. You don't even know how smart you are, but hopefully in our service, we'll make you realize how smart you are. So that's a neckline, inverse head and shoulder, double bottom. That's your neckline. Guess what the stock did? It bounced off the neckline. And now you have a small gap fill here, which is the real neckline. And what price is that? That price is 22.62, right there. Right there. A breakout over 22.62. Ladies and gentlemen, will propel the stock up to 24. They might mean small numbers if you're used to Tesla going up 15, 20, 30. But hey, it's a $20 stock. Frank? You're talking. You're, one second. You're talking yep. about 40, 60, 100% on your money on very cheap options. Go ahead, Paul. This is one of the most heavily shorted stocks as well. So it's always uh, uh, GME, you know, yep. uh, uh, yep. GameStop. But yeah. Okay. So the last so one that I'm going to show. If there's a squeeze, yeah, the, it can really move. Yeah. Squeeze. I mean, let, let's look at it this way. Um, the squeeze itself, and this is what I call pattern completion. I don't call because that's exactly what it is. One second, ladies and gentlemen. And Paul, thanks for your comments. Always love it. Um, this is pattern completion, in my opinion. Big, big supply zone, big supply zone, big supply zone, 28. Can we get to 28? I think we can. But don't get greedy at 28. Well, that's when the Big selling will come in. But between here and 28, you're talking 600% on your money. So like we're in New York, what the fuck? In the meantime, you got to keep dollar cost averaging within this range. If we break 1960, forget it. I'll take my loss. 
I'll short the stock because that means it's going to go to 1842. Right now, it's a cup, a handle, a range, and that's the range right there. Next one, DraftKings. Now, I know that every Robin Hood trader is like DraftKings and this and that. So what? I think the stock is about, because it's getting hammered right now. All right, made money, I'm down on it right now. And that's okay. It's okay, because the calls are cheap. Right now, the stock is so deeply oversold, it's not even funny. It's testing its 50-day moving average, and it might slip a little bit lower, mind you. But look at the internals. The internals are so deeply oversold, it's not even funny. When you get that low, we as robotic traders keep on buying. And the prospects of the company are huge. I heard the venture capitalist who was one of, who was a multi-billionaire who invested in DraftKings when no one even knew what the hell they were years ago. He laid down the scenario. I was like, okay. So this is, again, not a company that's going away, guys. You guys are no, know more about sports and sports betting than I do. But I play DraftKings on my iPhone. I play roulette. I love it. You know, just put it in there, roll the numbers, you know, pick the numbers. I love that. That's the only thing I do on DraftKings. So this is the daily chart, which looks like crap, mind you. But testing the 50-day moving average, which is still moving higher. So there will be support here. Maybe it'll slip a little bit lower. It also happens to be this line is the, is the neckline breakout. I mean, the range breakout. Watch. Right there. It just happens to be there. Now, let's take a look at the one hour. The one hour is kind of sexy. Why? Because it's a falling wedge. Adrian, are you still with us? Of course. Good. Are you listening or are you understanding? I am looking at the falling wedge. I like that. All right. Keep on looking. I'm going to change the color for you so you wake up a little bit. Hold on. Let's make this fatter. Come on. Let's make this really fat. All right. Let's change the color to this. Okay. That should be nice. Oh, that's a little bit more waking up color. Um, that, my ladies and gentlemen, my favorite members, is a falling wedge. Falling wedges are big money. Big money. Yes, they go around, you know, they slip and slide a little bit, but they're big money. Hold on. There you go. That is a falling wedge. So what happens in a falling wedge? Somebody says, oh, we're sitting down trend. No, it's not going high. I say bullshit. Why? Because I made money off these type of things. I say, let's trade this baby from here to 50. Yes, it might go to 64, 65. But we don't know that yet. And I do have some cheap calls going on. I have the 55 calls. I'm going to buy the 50 calls tomorrow. Hard. Because this is a beautiful turn. The last time it hit the bottom of the falling wedge, it went up from uh, 47 to 52. That is almost 200% on your options. Now that all the Robin Hood traders are so dead shit scared of of uh, 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 of um, DraftKings because they were all buying it here. Good. Let's buy it. Let's buy that fear. Bottom of the falling wedge right here. If it breaks the falling wedge, the next level is going to be this, which is 56. There's a lot of things coming. They're talking about locking down cities and more because COVID crisis uh, cases are rising. Who is the biggest ben beneficiary? DraftKings and other place. 
that are the COVID-19 place. On that note, gentlemen, I am pretty tired. It's 10.30 p.m. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I didn't even bother showing the VIX chart yet and stuff. It's all on my Twitter feed. All I ask you all to do, look, don't be religious on real estate trading, like Adrian said. Be methodical. Just use the tools that I'm showing you. Use your own intellect, and you're going to be fine. And what we did today is a prime example why our service should have 10,000 members. Markets opening not that hard, and I guided you all directly from the bottom, and I was dead right. And this is not the first time. So on that note, please get some good referrals. Get some good people like you to join us. Check us out. Because we're real. God bless America. Let's move on. U.S. exceptionalism. Our companies will always rule. Good night.